as opposed to when I was talking about cytokine receptor pathways, you have to recruit protein kinase we call JAK, just another kinase. It has to be recruited for the downstream phosphorylation event here in this pathway. You don't need protein kinase, but intrinsic kinase domain still has that. So that's a common, I would say, major difference between cytokine versus receptor tyrosine. And then I said FGF, receptor tyrosine kinase pathways, you know, a lot of downstream events occurring. You see the MEP kinase, RAF, RAS, SOS, GL, B2. You want to see soon in, when I'm going to talk about EGF signal pathway. It's basically the same thing. You're looking at it, this is FGF, five fibroblast graph growth factor. So these fibroblast growth factor is actually interact with fibroblast cell. So the fibroblast cell has a receptor, right? And then you have growth factor, attach them, and then what happens? Fibroblast will be proliferate. That's what the signal event is. But in this example, you know, the, the textbook <coughs> and the, actually the order of the textbook try to point out the significance of how this signaling molecule we call FGF will interact with FGF receptor. And that's what they really want to feature on the, on the textbook. Given that we look at it, that this interaction between signaling molecule and receptor is facilitated by the presence of heparin sulfate. Those heparin sulfates are sugar units of certain specific proteins. Uh, we call here glycosylated ECM protein heparin. Heavily glycosylated, particular one of the group, heparin sulfate with helping this. That's one example. How ligand and receptor interaction. You notice that you have a fibrogrowth, fibrogrowth receptor, they get dimerized. That's following the general theme. Nothing but this. Okay, that's why they want to show. Now, I want to tell you. Second example is epidermal growth factor receptor tyrosine kinase. Here, same thing. Receptor dimerization occurs upon interaction of epidermal growth factor, the ligand or signaling molecule with the receptor like this. Conformation or change occur. Three-dimensional structure change occur. Each individual EGF receptor will be normal. You have an external domain, transmembrane domain, internal, and you have a protein kinase domain. It's not JAK, it's just not a, another kinase. It's its own intrinsic domain. Upon dimerization, what happens here is that two baby look like kinase domains are interacting with tail to head man. This is the tail and this is the head. Right? So you see that N, this is N log means close to the N terminal, C log means close to the C terminal. So you have N and C and N and C, kind of a head to tail or tail to tail, if you want to say, to interact in physical manner. And then what happened here is that before, in activation conditions, you see that the active sites are close, like this, close to their own body. We call auto-inhibition. They are inhibited somehow. But upon this conformation or change with the ligand interacted, what happened is that this activation, activation arm is open. And then what happened here is that they start to phosphorylate. See that what residues are phosphorylate, you get the hint that it's tyrosine, tyrosine type. So you see, this, there are more than one, probably seven or eight residues of tyrosine get phosphorylated. We call it as hyperphosphorylation at tyrosine residue. These are all mediated by this intrinsic kinase domain found in the cellular domain of this tyrosine kinase receptor. Right. So that's one thing you want to know. And the downstream events, what happened after this phosphorylation, we will discuss a little bit later. A little bit later. Before then, I want to uh, point out one more time the major similarities and differences between cytokine receptor pathway and tyrosine kinase pathway. One major difference, again, I'm telling you this probably fifth time, the major difference between these two pathways is that in 
the Sefer Taras Ikhain, the third category, right, the third category, contains intrinsic kind of domain, which is involved in fast correlation of its six terminal region of the descent. We call it auto fast correlation. Moral fast forward. But cytokine receptor pathway, you have to need to check other fast candidates. The old diagram looks like a little complicated, but a lot of similarities get dimerized, and then the hyperphosphorylation in the cytokine domain. Same thing, but that's this one. Okay. So let's keep that in mind that <coughs> the difference. Now we have a, uh, another third example here. I said example three. Insulin receptor tyrosine kinase test. What I'm saying is insulin receptor itself is tyrosine kinase containing, you know, domain containing. So if this is this. This is a receptor tyrosine kinase, insulin receptor insulin receptor that has cytosolic domain, you have its intrinsic kinase domain. It can recognize tyrosine of it themselves and phosphorylate. They get hyperphosphorylation. But this Activation of this system because insulin receptor tyrosine kinase pathway is not leading to proliferation of the cell, but rather this signaling pathway is implicated in sugar metabolism. Actually, they just store sugar into as a polymer form of sugar we call glycogen, or convert them the sugar six carbon sugar into the three carbon, and then they actually convert them into the lipid. We say fat, right? That's what actually they, this pathway is implicated in. That's what I want to show you. All the details about what are the IRS, I'm not going to talk about it. Right? But here, we talked about previously uh, signaling cell, particular beta, pancreatic cell, and the They produce. Insulin as secreted. We talk about this in chapter 12 or 13. Insulin is secreted by what kind of uh, secretory pathway? Is it constitutively active or regulated? Huh? Thank you. It's regulated secretion, right? It's secreted. Uh, and once insulin is secreted, they are actually, usually they, they go into the end of the blood system, blood system, they enter the bloodstream, and then they will find our target. One of the target is liver cell. And then what happens is the insulin is released, and the insulin receptor occurs. And another target is adipose cell, IA what is adipose cell? Fat cell. Fat cell. So you have a here. Insulin receptor. And then you have insulin. Upon interaction between insulin and insulin receptor, what happened in the adipose cell? That's what this diagram is. You see that? Insulin, insulin receptor, and then hyperphosphorylation occurred here. And then a lot of downstream events occurred. And then what happened here is that one of the downstream events is this. The glucose transport is activated and uptaking glucose. So it's what happened with this. So a lot of sugar. Sugar is internalized into the cell and they are converted into polymer <coughs> form of sugar called glycogen. And then you see six carbon is broken down into three carbon and then they convert it into fatty acid. So they kind of store, you know adipose cells are storing energy. So that's what happens. This is the kind of the connection. So you can say this is like endocrine system, endocrine vascular It's not it's nothing to do with proliferation. It's more toward the storage of you know, molecules, right? You see the difference between them. Okay. So we have a, I introduced you three examples of a receptor tyrosine kind of pathway. And then I'm I'm gonna go to the second pathway, which is basically the first and second. Fibroblast growth or epidermal growth factor receptor tyrosine kinase pathway. It's basically the same. You know, see, you have an epidermal, you have the epidermal growth factor, the ligand, is actually interacting with the receptor dimerization occurs, 
And then you have an intrinsic time edge domain, and get hyperpossible relation, same thing. And then you want to know stepwise process, uh, knowing the name, and you should be able to align in order, right? If you see the study guides, you will find out those kind of questions. You see, first thing you want to know, graph, I think it's very easy to understand, graph, graph is something, right? You graph SOS. SOS is enzyme that replace GDP with GDP. SOS. So graph SOS, and SOS will remove GDP and add in GTP. So you know GTP bound GTP before GTP bound GTP is active. So they are laterally diffused, and they find out the effector, right? What is effector in cell biology? Substrate. See that? This signal molecule now use out. So it's kind of, you're going to memorize this. Uh, RTK, you set the hyper, hyperphosphor relation, and then you're going to go grab and SOS, and then what is next? G protein. But what is the name of G protein? RAS. Yeah, you want to know RAS. And then RAS, to activate RAS, it's kind of a domino now. You'll find out the downstream. What is downstream? I think some of you already watched it. Oh, this is, I, I, I will show you last Friday, professor teaching me about signal like transception pathway, and then we got like fainted mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the complexity of all these systems. Talking about protein kinase, phosphatases, and SF2 domain, SF3 domain, graph domain, all kinds of domains. Right? They're complicated, eventually, what's the emergency state? So, RAS, the RAS will find out the downstream target that. Raph. Raph. And Raph. And Raph, as you see the diagram, Raph will now they find out that, that the next downstream you know, substrate, that's the MAC. Uh, and then you have a MAC kinase, right? But they're actually skipping a lot of steps. So MAC will find out MAC KKK means kinase, kinase, kinase. And then MAC KK, MAC kinase, kinase. And then you have a map time. So that's the signal both in phosphorylation and cascade. So now map kinase, if you get phosphor, you get activated, right? See a pump phosphorylation. This is the diagram, it's very interesting. See it's inactive, inactive, and active. You get phosphorylation. What residues you get phosphorylation? Tyrosine. Same tyrosine over and over. Uh, this is what really, see tyrosine, tyrosine residue, get phosphorylated and activated, right? So here's another residue they indicated, but I, I just want you to know tyrosine, is one of the vast majority of cases, tyrosine get phosphorylated. Inactive baby and active baby. So, tyrosine get phosphorylated. We depend on scope. And here, it's not done, that kinase, right? Here. These MEP kinase get activated and downstream. I think it, I want to ask you to know this stepwise process up until MAP kinase. Here, don't worry about it too much. Okay. So MAP kinase get activated, and the final product will be cell proliferation. That's my point. Cell proliferation. But here, the depth downstream is a long term, you know, responses involves activation of transcription factors, obviously, ER phosphorylation. Dimerization, oligomerization, gene activation. What I mean by that, and one of the uh, important genes that actually turned on by this pathway is we call C look at that. But C force, this is uh, uh, G product, G product, uh, which will serve as transcription factor, but T as transcription factor. And we call this a master transcription factor. It actually <coughs> serves as transcription factor and find out another target gene that's required for proliferation. So it's all like a, <coughs> a positive feedback system. The higher, the more the you know activity, or the, the higher the amount of this active MEP kinase available, the more C force is created, the more C force is available, then more proliferation. Right? It could be epidermal, epidermal cell, it could be fibroblast, like a you know connective cells, and some more. Brain cell, you name it. 
skin cells or hair cells, similar pathways occur upon this parasitic uh, uh, pathway. So those are the three examples. So, uh, so from now on, I'm going to talk about the last four. The last four slides, each individual slide has seen a transaction pathways. I want to jot down probably on whiteboard the key essence of each individual process that you probably responsible for each other. Okay. Instead of dealing in too much detail about each individual. The four type of similar transaction pathways that I'm going to talk about one, when similar, second, hegemon similar, third, TNF receptor signal, fourth, not signal pathways. Common feature, I think you know this. What are the common features between these four signal pathways? One common feature, or two, if I said. I mentioned earlier, one, number one, they are all participated in embryo development, or I'll say development, which involves specification and differentiation. You know that? The common yeah, feature, number one, okay. development of procedures. Number two, this one you want to know, right? Number two, the similarities between these four signal exceptions and pathways is that these four pathways involve dissociation, dissociation or degradation of transcription factors. Association or degradation of transcription factor in order to activate these pathways. That you want to see over and over again from now on. So I'm going to talk about first, first thing. When to signal it? When to signal it, I want you to know why well, I want to move on this. When to signal it, you want to know. So I would say that in the presence of when the signal molecule, the receptor preload is get activated, and then what happens here is that beta continue unpossible. So without when you hold with when unphosphorylated cathenine serve as active transcription factor. Here, without when hyperphosphorylated, when will be ubiquitinated and degraded. You know, ubiquitin serve as a death marker. So once you get ubiquitinated, it dies. Protein will be great. So here, the phosphorylation is not the best scenario. Usually, you get phosphorylation to get active and then do something. But here, this is not. Okay. So this whole diagram is really complicated. But I want you to know that when the signal is better contained, okay, you should be able to connect it when better contained. And then next we have Hegio. We call it So again, you, you can think about yes, with or without. I think you already probably some of you find out. If you're looking at it, uh, if you have with, same thing. With Hegio. Now what protein you get activated? Thigh. Right. Hegio, side. And then active transcription. Without Hesio, what happens? Psi hyperphosphorylate. Then psi will be 
then same scenario. And you may ask him, hey, Dr. Kim, so what signal in a hydraulic signal, what that what what these signal for? What is for development and specification differentiation. Yeah. So the went and hydro signal. Who these guys? Thank you. And the and the, the the receptor names are very interesting. Here we say one of the receptors we call small. Right, small. And then the small and patch. Cat PTC, patch, and small. Two receptors. But before we say freezer, <coughs> I mean, these, these receptors discovered from C elements. And then you know, based on the mutation of these receptors, they get very specific type of phenotype. Based on the phenotype, they, they name that this patch versus small versus prism. So, but then those are not most important stories. I want you to know what really happened about them. And then, third, we talk about TNF alpha factor. So you get a TNF alpha uh, signal molecule, and then you have a uh, receptor. TNF alpha versus here, I think you want to know this. I kappa B. I kappa B. I kappa B. I kappa B. I means inhibitory. So you have, uh, as you see the diagram, right? That you see that. Uh, TNF alpha receptor is activated. Long story short, long story short, inhibitory kappa B proteins are degraded. Same thing. And as a result, NF kappa B. Not cable, kappa, and have kappa B survey transcription factor. And then downstream gene expression. I mean, this NF kappa B pathway is heavily investigated by immunologists, actually. Uh, this pathway alone would be one chapter in immunology. So we're not going to cover that. If you're interested in this technology and this pathway, please take the immunology course. And also development of course. They, they talk about this in more detail than this is the intro cell by the Napa was definitely. So this I uh, inhibitory material will be inactivated so that this N kappa B transcription factor will be entering and moving. And then last the last pathway is <coughs> delta and large pathway. So you may see that, oh, what is the signal molecule here? Hey, that's delta receptor. It's a signal molecule. And then what is your receptor for this signal molecule? Well, it's actually not the receptor. You have not the receptor right there. This is not the receptor. So, so here, this guy S signal molecule. And then notch is the receptor. So it's like a receptor receptor interaction. And if you're looking at the study guide, I said, with the presence of here, the selenium, this is the enzyme, this uh, notch receptor is broken down. You see that? It's broken down into smaller fragments. So you see, I would say uh, broken. I'd say notch receptor, notch R, so as a transcription factor. So that's, so if you're looking at all four signal pathways, similarities is that, again, I'm saying either dissociation or degradation of material. As a result, you produce an active form of transcription factor. It actually enters the nucleus and touches the gene, causes gene expression. Right. Uh, Terribly complicated. Uh, uh, 
particularly I want to circle number three. Okay, number three. Uh, why I'm saying probably not tomorrow, not tomorrow, probably then just circle number three. This signaling pathway is a lot study. So I want you to know and <coughs> kappa B or TNF alpha signaling pathway, particularly the transcription factor. What is the active transcription factor in this case? Is it I kappa B or NF kappa B? You tell me what is it? NF kappa B. So we'll, we'll, at least you want to know one of this one, okay? This one. Uh, we have a 20 minute. I'm going to go probably just, just show you one a video. And then we'll start. I know I have already some video on.